Hello, everyone. I'm Carol Considine. I'm the Assistant Dean for Outreach and Diversity at the Batten College of Engineering Technology at Old Dominion University. We are so happy to have you with us here today for this program entitled Civil Engineering Degree and Passion. And we're really lucky to have Dr. Sharif Ishak with us today. He um, came to Old Dominion University from uh, Louisiana State University and also the University of Alabama in Huntsville. He has over 25 years experience um, in transportation engineering with an emphasis on intelligent transportation systems, operation and control, modeling and simulations, safety, human factors and driving behavior, artificial intelligence, and advanced computing application in transportation, and the new and emerging area of connected and automated vehicles. He has served as a PI or co-PI on over 35 federal and state funded projects and supervised more than 35 MS and PhD students to completion. He is the founder of the Intelligent Transportation Systems Lab at Louisiana Transportation Research Center and the LSU Driving Simulation Simulator Facility. Since 2015, he has served as the chair of the Transportation Research Board Standing Committee on Artificial Intelligence and Advanced Computing Applications, which promotes and advances interdisciplinary research at the intersection of the transportation engineering and computer science and information technology. He is also a member of the National Cooperative Highway Research Program Panel for maintaining and executing a research agenda for connected and automated vehicles um, in the United States. Dr. Ishak has extensive academic um, and administrative and service experience in, um, in at, the at all of the universities that he served at, and he's also the associate editor for the Canadian Journal on Civil Engineering. I've known him for about two years, and it's a pleasure to work with him, and he is a great addition at Old Dominion University. We're really happy to have him with us, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy his presentation today. Thank you, Dr. Sh Dr. Ishak. All right. Thank you, Carol, for this kind introduction, a very long one. I uh, appreciate that. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and um, I'd like to welcome everybody who is um, uh, who joining the session. Uh, obviously, I can't you know, hear or see any, anybody, but I hope that everybody can hear me well. Um, so uh, the objective of this um, uh, talk today uh, is to talk in general just about civil engineering uh, as a profession and also as a degree um, that could lead to a successful career for many of you who might be inter interested in, in civil engineering. So um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, the profession first, and then I'm going to switch to talk about the civil engineering degree program that we have here at ODU for those who might be interested in joining our program as well. Uh, so when they talk about civil engineering, I find it always so easy um, to describe civil engineering because you don't have to look too far to know what civil engineers do. Uh, if you just look around you, uh, you will see uh, numerous examples of the work of civil engineers. Um, uh, the buildings that you are in right now, you know, your homes, uh, the, the the water that you get in your house when you, when you open the tap in the morning, uh, it, you know everything that you do. The the highways, the the uh, the uh, 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 the bridges that you cross, the airports, the, the you know the ports and everything. So all all of these elements are great demonstrations of the work of civil engineers. Uh, there's so many of them. So you, you could probably see the slide here that I have. I have two great structures. Um, uh, the, the top one, which is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, uh, one of the uh, obviously the marvels of, of the uh, civil engineer work. And then at the bottom one, uh, you'll see the uh, Burj Khalifa uh, in, um, in Dubai, uh, which is 160 stories high. So you can imagine uh, the amount of work and design that is put into structures like that. And, and the work behind that essentially is uh, civil engineering. This is really uh, a demonstration of what civil engineers do in, in their profession. So again, in general, when we talk about engineering, uh, it's easy to describe it as simply the application of math and science to create something. I can underline the word create something here because that's what engineers do. Um, uh, unlike scientists who would try to really explain the, uh, the world around us, we as engineers create the world that we live in. 
So it is our job as engineers to create things. Uh, and we use the natural resources that we have available to us to create always something new. Uh, so as engineers, we are naturally problem solvers. Uh, engineers are typically looking for problems to solve every day. And you can tell that even from their their childhood and you watch them grow uh, grow up and they, they they always look for problems to solve and you always you know um, make a comment that this person is probably going to be an engineer just from that observing that type of behavior so we're always looking for new solutions or even improving on existing existing ones so essentially the work that we do really improves the society and the community that we live in and I have uh, this interesting quote from um, the 31st U.S. President Herbert Hoover, who said that it's a great profession. Well, he happened to be an engineer as well and a businessman. And he said that this is a great profession. Uh, and he describes this as, as it's a profession that it takes a figment of one's imagination and convert it into reality. Um, and, and that is really the work and the essence of uh, engineering. So, and, and, and the consequence of that is it, it really brings jobs and homes. So this shows you how important engineering is and the role it plays to support uh, the economy. Uh, we can't imagine an economy without uh, engineering. Uh, and of, of course, you know, the, the, the consequence of that, it is elevates the standard of living, improves the quality of our lives. And we know that and we enjoy that every day in our life as, as citizens of whatever country that we, we live in. So it, it is definitely a privilege for us to, as engineers to do what society expects us to do. Um, you know, and, and the professional obviously um, consists of three components. We have the knowledge that we gain from the education, um, the, the good judgment that we have to exercise and, and the discretion. And we also have to abide by certain rules and, and regulations. So we have codes of conduct. We have codes of ethics that are set by um, uh, engineering organizations that tell us exactly what we should do and not do uh, in the profession. And we have to keep in mind that whatever we do, we're always doing this for the public good. It's the service to the public. And that is the ultimate goal of, of, uh, of our job as engineers. Now we focus on civil engineering in particular, we recognize that um, it is the oldest and quint quintessential engineering profession. Uh, so even before the first degree was awarded in civil engineering, which is less than 200 years old uh, by RPI, but before that people have always been exercising and, and practicing civil engineering for, for hundreds and for centuries before that, uh, even though they were not called civil engineers, but they were still doing the work of civil engineers as we describe it today. Uh, but to really describe what civil engineers do, it's, it's very simple. It's design, build, and maintain the infrastructure for all the well-being of the society. And I underline the two words here, infrastructure and society. Now, these are the two key words that we have to keep in mind when we talk about civil engineering. Uh, infrastructure simply means that everything that we look around and we enjoy that supports the society that we live in, and the, the word society means that whatever we do has to have some benefit to the society that, that we live in. We don't do things just uh, for no reason. Uh, there is always a benefit and, um, and, and uh, an effect on the society that, uh, that we live in. Um, again, like I mentioned, centuries before the first civil engineering degree was awarded, People have been doing great work in civil engineering, and you can look around and see all these landmarks. Uh, for example, you know the, the pyramids of um, um, uh, in Egypt, um, uh, which are 2,500 uh, years old before BC, even more than that. So it's almost 4,000. So you you can imagine um, the work that was put into building something like that. So even sometimes we can't even understand how. Uh, they were able to do this a long time ago. Um, and and uh, I'm originally from Egypt and I happened to, to, I lived in Egypt and I was a few miles away from uh, from the pyramids. I could actually see the top of the pyramids from the balcony of my apartment, uh, by the way. So uh, that was really a great experience that I, I will never forget, of course. Uh, then the Colosseum in Rome, which I visited a couple of times, you know, and many of you probably have. Uh, the Eiffel Tower. And so there's so many examples around us that the landmarks that really speak for the uh, work of civil engineers. Um, uh, the Panama Canal is an example, obviously the, the Roman uh, aqueduct. So great examples here that we see um, uh, in, uh, in the world around us. 
uh, the Great Wall of China, of course, a great example, uh, the Blue Mosque in Turkey, uh, the Machu Picchu in, in Peru, and the Disney World, of course, uh, which is the most recent one, and I'm quite sure a lot of people have visited or would love to visit Disney World uh, at some point in time. So again, uh, there's so many examples out there that really speak for uh, the, the work of civil engineering. Um, I'm citing another example, um, which is in our backyard here. This is a new project that uh, uh, just started recently, which is the, the HRBT, is the Hampton Road uh, Bridge Tunnel Expansion Project. Just to show you the magnitude of, of the work that's going to be put into a project like this, this is expanding an existing tunnel, okay, and widening that tunnel and, and, and adding 8,000 feet. Um, and, uh, and this is going to cost $3.8 billion with a B. Um, and it is something that is scheduled to um, to be completed uh, by the end of 2025, which is um, five years uh, from now. So again, I mean, this, this just shows you the, the, the amount of work that has to be put into a project of that scale of that magnitude. So what, what do we mean when we, when we say infrastructure? And I mentioned this briefly in the beginning. Now, uh, there's so many examples of what we mean by infrastructure if you look around us. An, an example would be the examples, buildings, bridges, power plants, uh, you know, industrial facilities, commercial facilities, highways, the transportation network that we, um, that we see around us, all the streets, the roads, um, uh, uh, the railroads, the airports, airplanes. Um, I mean, everything that we see around us and we use every day um, uh, is example of the infrastructure. The water um, um, uh, treatment plants, the water uh, uh, the distribution uh, systems, uh, you know, the wastewater treatment. Uh, so, you know, all of these examples um, are essentially what uh, makes the infrastructure that, uh, that, that civil engineers are responsible for building. Um, and then again, when you study civil engineering, um, just like any other um, engineering discipline, you will see that there are certain specialties uh, within uh, the engineering, the civil engineering discipline that you that we have to focus on. And as a civil engineer, you get to study all of them. But chances are, when you graduate with a degree, you end up uh, choosing one of those specialties to um, to specialize in. Um, so, uh, again, there are five specialties, essentially structural, geotechnical, water resources, and coastal transportation, and environmental. And um, um, for in the interest of time, and you, sometimes I have, um, you know, uh, uh, short videos to play, but, uh, but today I will skip that part, but I'll be happy to share that link uh, with the attendees, maybe with the chat box, so I can pass them on to, to Carol, the moderator, to, to do that uh, just at the end of the presentation. And then you can watch it on on your own later on. It's it's just on YouTube. Um, so structural engineering again is very easy to to relate to this one because you know all the buildings that we see around us and we use every day in our life. Uh, that's an example. That's an example of civil engineering of the structural engineering work. Uh, so as in, uh, civil engineers, we try to understand how we build structures. So that means we have to study the, the load. We have to study how the load is transmitted and how, how the life load and, and the dead load, um, you know, for this, for the structure, the beams and the columns and all the structural elements, how we put them together to make sure that the, the structure that we build can sustain all the, um, the, um, uh, the load it's designed for and also sustain any natural disasters. Your know, example has to be resistant to earthquakes, to hurricanes, to floods. And, and 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 all of that. So that so all of this is the, really the essence of what structured engineers do. And, and this is a major component, it's one of the core components of a civil engineering curriculum. Um, when you study civil engineering, you take a lot of courses in structure analysis and design, and you understand exactly how to build and design a, uh, a structural um, um, uh, building from, from the ground up. Um, uh, other examples of you know um, bridges uh, again to just demonstrate the different types of structures and each design is unique. It's completely different. So you have the suspended, for example, bridge like you see on the top of the screen. The bottom of the screen you have the uh, the arch bridge. So and 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 these have completely different design concept and it all depends on the objective of your design that really tell you which type of design would work best for 
which location and which purpose that you're building the structure for. Uh, ge geotechnical engineering is definitely one of the most important elements of civil engineering. Uh, every structure that we build has to sit on foundation. Uh, there's got to be a foundation for every structure that we build. And that the, the purpose of the foundation is that it really transfers the load that's coming from the building down to the to the ground and to the soil. So, you know, geotechnical engineering means that we have to understand the soil characteristics. Uh, we have to understand the bearing capacity of the soil and how the soil behaves when you apply load uh, on it and, and how it deforms and how it settles. So all of these issues have to be studied um, when we do the soil mechanics. And, and of course, that also tells us what type of foundation we're going to use. Uh, do we use shallow foundation? We do we use footings, do we use piles? Um, again, depending on the type of soil, depending on the location, depending on the structure itself that you're building, you have to learn all of these uh, important uh, characteristics. Um, again, when even for highway pavements, you have to have layers under that um, you know, for the, for the foundation. If you're building dams, levees, embankments, all of these require the knowledge of geotechnical engineering. Um, and slope stabilization, sometimes we have to put structures um, at locations when uh, the, um, the, the ground is not level and, and you have uh, sloped um, uh, foundations and you, and you have to study uh, the stability of, this of, the, of the soil uh, so that it can sustain that, that load. So a lot of math involved and calculations that you have to go through to find out if your structure can be placed on, on these type of soils or not. Um, another branch in civil engineering or specialty, I should say, is the water resources engineering, which is really understanding the, 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 the water resources around us and, and, uh, and, uh, and doing all the planning, design, construction, and maintenance um, um, associated with uh, hydroelectric power facilities, uh, canals, dams, pumping. It also includes the treatment of the water uh, for us to be able to use, uh, uh, to be able to drink, and and also the um, the waste uh, water uh, treatment as well um, for the water after we use. So all of these things belong to the water resources uh, engineering. Um, again, we all know that water is a scarce uh, resource. Um, nowadays, we have to be very careful, have to be very conservative when we cons consume the water. So we have to understand the cycle and we have to understand um, how to, uh, to use uh, the water uh, efficiently. Uh, sustainability is an important uh, element in civil engineering and it's becoming increasingly more important uh, nowadays. And we talk about it all the time because we really have to uh, um, to in our design, we have to maintain a sustainable the de, um, design for the uh, to protect the environment and strike the balance between what we do and what we desire to do as a society and the natural system that that um, that we use as a resource. Uh, coastal engineering is very important. I'm quite sure a lot of you uh, hear often on the news climate change uh, and, and the consequences of uh, what it means, uh, uh, sea level rise, um, water level rising and, uh, oops, this change. And, and how we deal with this, especially when we live close to the coast, uh, what happens when we have a rising uh, sea level? Uh, what, what happens to the, the, the potential of flooding? Uh, so we have to be prepared to deal with these, um, uh, with these uh, disasters or, or changes that are happening to the environment around us. So that's important for us to understand, uh, especially in our, in our case, we live in Norfolk, which is a coastal city. So we are surrounded by water all around. So we have to be very careful and we have to think about the future, what's gonna happen as an effect of climate change and, and global warming and how that's gonna um, raise the sea level level and, 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 uh, and, and this could uh, obviously um, cause damage to our, um, uh, uh, society. The uh, uh, the other thing we have to keep in mind is that the coastal erosion and how do we protect our coast and our beaches um, and, and, and uh, how to protect ourselves from the uh, storm surges uh, and, and the flooding. So these are issues that uh, maybe in the past we were not very conscientious of, but nowadays uh, we have to pay close attention to this because we do see um, more impact of these uh, uh, phenomena on um, in, on the future. 
Transportation uh, engineering is also another specialty. Uh, this happens to be also my specialty, uh, which I have been working in this area since I graduated. And again, transportation is, is a, a, a very easy um, uh, specialty to understand. I mean, everybody is using transportation every day. So uh, transportation engineers essentially do the planning, design, operation, uh, and, and maintenance of the transportation system. They look at how to improve operation and how to maintain safety. Uh, you definitely want to minimize the fatality rates and the injuries, and you want to have people use a transportation system uh, in a way that is very safe. And we also tap into technology because technology is like such a great resource for us to, to use in transportation. So many examples are out there um, in, which um, have actually led to creating new modes of transportation. So if you think about the last few years and, and people talking about transportation um, network companies such as Uber and, and Lyft, uh, these are new modes of transportation that would never have existed without uh, the the technology and the smartphones. Um, and, and, and technology has so many different examples. Uh, I mentioned here on the slide connected vehicles, uh, which is uh, uh, something that a new technology that is um, uh, being developed right now, which allows vehicles to communicate among each other on the road, just like you know having Wi-Fi uh, communication between devices at home. Uh, vehicles can communicate with each other on the road as well uh, within a sp specific transmission range. And communication means that the, that the information can be transmitted from one vehicle to another, providing warning and providing safety um, uh, messages um, uh, to vehicles. Uh, and so this is this is one of the applications that, uh, that we're trying to use connected vehicles for. Um, and again, uh, in the news, uh, you hear a lot about companies now trying to develop um, and they're, they're racing to get to the finish line. Who's going to get their, their autonomous cars out in the market first? Um, and again, different level of automation and, you know, uh, how to, um, to Im improve safety simply by taking the driver out of the, of the car and, and just letting a machine drive your vehicle. Of course, it's, it's definitely something that is very challenging to do, uh, but the technology is also allowing us to explore that as a possibility so that we can improve safety and you reduce uh, injuries and fatalities. Um, environmental engineering is also one of the specialties. So uh, here we, we talk about you know how to protect the environment, pollution, uh, whether it's air pollution, water solution, uh, pollution, soil pollution, all of these things we have to study um, in civil engineering so that we can minimize that um, in storm water management, um, in soil and hazard waste management. So these are important issues that we have to deal with as civil engineers, because that is really something that is the outcome of the, uh, the, the society that we live in. Um, um, one of the um, professional societies um, that really um, um, basically control or, or, or govern the, uh, the practices of civil engineers is called the American Society of Civil Engineers. And this is a worldwide organization uh, it, 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 its job essentially is to um, to promote uh, the profession uh, and, and the practice of civil engineering, and they develop a body of knowledge that really uh, talks about their expectations of what civil engineers should um, uh, be to become successful in that in that practice. So they identified certain concept terms and activities that lead to specific outcomes uh, that that, they, that are very important for. Uh, civil engineers to be successful in the in the profession itself, and they put them in different categories. You got the foundational, the engineering fundamentals, the technical, and the professional. Um, so, and all these outcomes essentially have to be achieved at one way or another. Uh, they they could be achieved throughout your career in civil engineering, starting from um, the undergraduate program that you enroll in, and then it goes on to the postgraduate, and then it go on to the um, to the practice itself, and, and some of them can be also, also self-development uh, as well. So there are different pathways to achieve those outcomes, and but they all start with one thing, which is obviously the undergraduate education, which is uh, can can be achieved in a, in a four-year EBIT accredited program. But then beyond that, you also have options to pursue uh, postgraduate education, um, master's, PhD, or continuing education, or getting graduate certificates. And then you have internships also um, and early career experiences that you can have and, and the ability to work with 
um, civil engineers, practitioners who uh, uh, would give you the mentorship that you need. And then along the way as well, you can develop certain outcomes simply through self-study, personal observation, and, and your own personal reflection um, in, in the profession. So all these, all these things together, okay, will give you the pathway to achieve the 21 outcomes that they identified in that body of knowledge. Uh, we try to do address as much as possible in the first one, which is the first pathway to undergraduate education. But it is definitely a continuous process for, for you to, uh, uh, to become a full-fledged civil engineer. The desired attributes of civil engineer, and these are the most important skills that the civil engineer uh, needs to possess, okay, um, um, before and after graduation, good communication skills, uh, ethical values, uh, critical thinking and creativity, uh, solid foundation of um, the math, physics, statistics, life sciences, um, design skills, knowledge of economics, history, environment, and societal needs, and the ability to work in a multidisciplinary work environment. Uh, it, it is difficult for us to work as civil engineers alone in a silo. Typically, when you work on any major civil engineering, uh, any engineering project, it definitely can um, um, uh, includes a lot of different disciplines. You may be working side by side with electrical engineer and a mechanical engineer or industrial engineer, uh, simply because there's just not one single project that can only be done exclusively by civil engineers, okay? Um, all the different disciplines have to participate as well. That's what makes it multidisciplinary. So now I'm gonna spend a few minutes just talking about our ODU civil engineering degree program here. Uh, our department has 15 full-time faculty and instructors. Our curriculum um, has 130 credit hours. And again, they are distributed among the different areas and the specialties that I talked about before, plus, of course, the general education courses that take care of all the foundational um, outcomes that I talked about. Um, so again, the structural, geotechnical, water resources, coastal, transportation, environmental, all of them together, okay, will make up the curriculum plus the general education um, courses. We do offer a minor in environmental engineering, okay, so students can take a couple extra courses and, and, and graduate with a minor. In, in this area, our program is AVID accredited. So we go through accreditation cycle every six years. Um, and we offer small class sizes, which is really good for, uh, for our students because this simply means that the, the um, student to faculty ratio is low and it gives the students a chance to receive more individual attention from, uh, from the instructors and from the professors uh, who are teaching. We offer good academic and career advising system as well. So every semester we, uh, meet with our students and we make sure they are on track to, you know, to graduate on time and we tell them what courses they need to take and um, uh, and help them uh, with the re registration process. Um, this is a snapshot that shows you the um, the float chart. We call this as a float chart because it does show you all the, the courses um, that we have in our civil engineering curriculum. And you can see here they're actually spread over eight semesters. So we expect students to graduate in four years if they really follow this flow chart and in the flow chart obviously also shows you here what courses you have to take uh, as prerequisite before you take other courses so it's very important for you to follow that flow chart to be able to to graduate uh, on time and and to be able to finish in eight semesters uh, like the the flow chart is showing here but again if you look at the flow chart here you will see the variety of courses that we have um, you know, some of them are civil engineering, some of them are not. Uh, but again, that's um, these are the courses that uh, that we currently have in our curriculum. So, 130 credit hours uh, will give you um, the um, the entire um, uh, will allow you to complete the civil engineering degree. In the last year, we usually wrap wrap up the the curriculum with uh, a capstone uh, project, which is a design project that all the students work together as teams. Uh, but we also offer uh, some electives uh, for students who would like to specialize, for example, in, in certain areas, and they want to choose their own courses um, in, in those areas. So we give them two electives to choose uh, whatever courses they would like to take. If they like structure, they can take them in structures. If they like transportation, they can take them in transportation, and so on. Um, again, we try to focus on student success, okay, by by focusing on these skills here, which I already talked about earlier, the good communication skills, very important for engineers to have. 
critical thinking and problem solving skills, design skills, leadership skills, and the ability to work with other uh, engineers in a, in a multidisciplinary work environment. Um, education and, and, and learning takes place in the classroom, but also outside the classroom. It's very important for us to tell the students all the time that um, it's not only in the classroom that you learn, you also learn outside the classroom, and therefore, you know, you really need to join student or, uh, chapter organizations and be involved in extracurricular activities. Uh, some of the organizations that we have and are very active as the American Society of Civil Engineering, Environmental Engineering Student Association, and National C, uh, Civil Engineering Honor Society, and, and others. You know, again, being uh, involved with one of those uh, organizations allows you, allows you to learn a lot more. Um, and, and allows you to interact with professionals and allows you to also participate in competitions. So ASC, for example, has two annual competitions. They build a concrete canoe and they compete uh, nationally and local and regionally. And they also um, you know, have another competition to build a steel bridge as well. We also tell our students to, um, you know, those who might be interested in pursuing postgraduate studies, why not start doing research uh, before you graduate with um, by working with faculty side by side uh, in, in labs on on on, uh, on the research projects. Uh, so again, you know, building research skills before you graduate that's very important. Uh, and then I'm throwing a, a few pictures here, um, you know, from from the past. Students are having fun, as you can see here, uh, working on um, the, the their canoe and uh, and in the competition and and building steel bridges. You know, having fun out there. So again, it's very important to mix learning and fun together because this is the best combination you can ever have. A lot of student activities, as you can see in the pictures here, flipping burgers too. Um, that's, this is uh, obviously a lot of fun to do. Um, and again, um, you know, the students are uh, very active. Um, you know, they, they like to do this um, and they like to learn. Um, when they, they also interact also with, uh, with uh, alumni, they invite, folks to come and talk and give them, you know, uh, share their experience with them uh, in the classroom or outside the classroom as well. Um, a few more pictures here also again, showing what the students are doing um, outside the classroom. So uh, again, uh, just quickly, what do you do when you graduate as a civil engineer? What are the options? What does the job market offer you? Um, so uh, every, everybody has to think about this ahead of time. You know, what happens when I have a degree? What what can I do? Where can I work? Uh, so again, in in civil engineering specifically, we we see the statistics here is that you know almost half of the graduates end up working consulting firms, but the, a lot of graduates also end up working for state and local government um, in construction manufacturing, uh, federal government, or even have their own uh, practice and and become self employed. Maybe that that happens down the road later on after they get experience, they can you know, start their own consulting company and, 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 and do uh, uh, the work themselves. And so, I mean, so there are so many options for you to, to choose from, depending on what you like and depending on what specialty that you're interested in. As far as earning uh, is concerned, I mean, um, civil engineers really make good money out there. Uh, the market is, is still pretty strong. Uh, the numbers I'm showing here on the, on the slide are not updated for, uh, of 2016. Uh, showing an average salary eighty three thousand, and then talk about the U.S. here. Um, and uh, again, uh, according to the, the Department of Labor Statistics, it, it is showing that the the uh, the jobs in civil engineering, um, the market is growing, uh, expanding. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, civil engineers who are retiring, and 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 those jobs will be uh, obviously need would have to be f uh, filled. And and of course, with the growth in the uh, the growing economy. Uh, especially here in, in the U.S. in the infrastructure, um, uh, the new infrastructure bill that is, you know, right now being uh, reviewed in, in by by the um, by the Congress. Um, uh, if if that infrastructure bill gets approved, it's going to create a lot of job opportunities for civil engineers um, as well. Um, we're very fortunate to have um, uh, support from uh, alums. Alums, those are. Uh, past graduates who uh, you know graduated from our our program in civil engineering, they went out, became very successful in their own profession, in their own ways, in whatever they do, and they come back and they give back to us. 
um, uh, you know, and by supporting our program, supporting our students, helping our students find internship opportunities, of raising funds for them to get scholarships, to be able to pay for tuition and things like that. So those are the folks who are uh, we're carrying on all the time so um so that we can uh, we can keep uh, supporting our students and, and giving them the best uh, support that we have um again i'm going to wrap up this is my last slide i just want to say one thing is it's very exciting time for uh, for anybody to be a civil engineer there's so many dominating issues that we have to deal with uh, nowadays, um, you know, sustainability and, and how to make, to make our community more sustainable society, environment and economy. Uh, very challenging um, um, opportunities out there for us to, uh, to to take advantage of and to make an make an impact and make a difference. Um, reinforcing, uh, reinforcing, rebuilding the infrastructure system in the US here. And I think in many parts of the world, the infrastructure system is becoming old is becoming inefficient in terms of energy and and uh, and it has to be updated and and of course that takes a lot of work and that's the work of civil engineers redefining mobility which is in transportation now we're looking at you know changing the way we move um, mobility on demand and uh, and new concepts on how we can we can work uh, remotely sometimes and you know changing the way we uh, we move in society in general okay um, the situation that we are facing nowadays with pandemic and, and all this stuff and how that impacts transportation so again mobility is taking a different shape uh, and 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 we experience that nowadays uh, looking for renewable energy and and, and and ways to reduce the footprint of the uh, current energy practices that we have so again uh, so many challenges out there there's tremendous need for civil engineers. And we are basically counting on those who are interested to come and join us in in learning how to tackle these problems and how to overcome these challenges so we can have a better future for for us and for uh, for the next generation as well. And uh, I'm going to wrap up by saying that uh, again, if you uh, need more information uh, beyond this session and after all the questions and everything, you can always visit our website at www.odu.edu slash CE. And there's, got all, there's a lot of information out there. You can also contact us uh, uh, by email or um, or phone or, uh, in any way you like. Okay, well, that I'm just gonna turn back to, um, to Carol. I think I went over time, but I apologize for that. You know, that was a great presentation. I'm also a civil engineer, so I'm fascinated. So Dr. Oh, thank, Dr. thank you. Dr. Shah, thank you so much. So we actually have a student um, who recently graduated from the Civil and Environmental Engineering Program at Old Dominion University. His name is Stephen Greeling. Um, so I'd like Stephen to introduce himself. And while Stephen is talking, make sure you use your chat box to ask any questions that you're interested in answering, because after Stephen introduces himself, we'll go to your questions. Hi, Stephen. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes. Awesome. So, hey everyone, my name is Steven. Like Carol mentioned, I did just recently graduate this past May with an undergraduate and degree in civil engineering and a minor in environmental. I'm currently in the accelerated master's program, which is one of the options you have to pursue um, an MS degree um, where you'll take classes actually in your senior year. Um, you start taking the graduate level classes and then in one more year, um, you'll receive a, receive a master's degree. So my master's program is gonna be in environmental engineering. Um, on campus, I've worked on the engineering machine shop in the past, which is where um, I got experience getting hands on working on designing um, parts for custom projects students may be doing research with, or even um, for some of the um, labs that students have on campus, some of the materials they need are manufactured in there. So I got to work on that. Um, and then I've also been a member of the Environmental Engineering Student Association. Um, last summer, I actually did have an internship on the Norfolk Naval Base that I got through one of the career fairs at ODU. And um, one thing I really liked about this is it kind of showed me um, what I wanted to lean more towards within the engineering field. So um, during the summer, I got to do structural analysis on the ships um, and found out that structural engineering wasn't really something that I wanted to do for a career. Um, so that's when I started leaning more towards the environmental side. Um, I currently, um, I started doing research as a senior at ODU and then am currently now doing research as a graduate student um, related to water quality and flow analysis, um, analyzing lake aeration in a local city, um, Chesapeake. Um, so the city has these new aeration tanks and they wanna compare them to the old ones. So we're doing analysis on that. 
Um, and then outside of engineering, um, some of the things I'm involved in is I work in the Office of Admissions giving tours, um, but I'm also a member of the Honors College and have served on the Student Government Association. Stephen, thank you so much for your introduction. One of the questions that we have I think would be great for you to answer, and this is from Catherine in Virginia Beach. How did you know you wanted to be a civil engineer? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, when I was in high school, I actually went to one of the governor's STEM academies in Chesapeake. So I went to Grassfield High School and got introduced to engineering courses there. Um, originally, I thought I wanted to do architecture, um, but when I decided, when I chose ODU, um, architecture wasn't an option for a degree. Um, so civil engineering is basically the mathematical side um, to architecture. And so I was like, okay, I'll do civil engineering, um, kind of lean towards that structural side. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, structural engineering is something that I wanted to do. Um, but then at ODU, I found environmental engineering, um, which is something that I've kind of become more passionate about um, in terms to like um, sea level rise, um, coastal flooding and different things like that. Um, so I think it was actually in the classes when I really found out what I specifically wanted to do. Um, but why I chose civil engineering was actually because I wanted to do architecture. Um, and so one of the great things that ODU offers is their first class that you take is Engineering 110. Um, and they actually expose you to all the disciplines ODU offers for the degree within engineering. So some students may come in thinking that, hey, I want to do civil engineering. But then um, during that class, when they get introduced to some of the mechanical opportunities, they decide that they want to do that instead. Um, so that class was really great in kind of narrowing my focus. Um, and so that's kind of why I chose civil. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Dr. Ishak, we have two questions, and I'm going to combine them. The first question is, what is the difference between civil engineering and architecture? And then how do civil engineers and architects work together to create a structure? I think you're muted still, Dr. Ishak. Okay, how about now? That's good. That's good. We can hear you. It, okay, it's working now. Yeah, it, it's kind of spotty. I'm not sure what's happening. It might be my headset. Um, it's doing something weird. It keeps muting and unmuting on its own. I'm not even touching anything. <laughs> so I, I press, yeah, step back <laughs> from the desk. Um, so I, I was saying my sister is an architect and and, uh, and uh, she was, you know, uh, she's older than me. And actually she inspired me to be a civil engineer because I was fascinated with the work that she was doing. I think the difference between the two is an architect is, is more concerned with the arch, art, artistic look of the building and the structure that, you know, the, the art, artistic design itself. They don't really look in, get into the details of, of the, um, of the, of the, um, the actual design elements that would take to, to, to do the actual construction itself. Um, they just basically look at the, um, how the building is going to look. Uh, on the on the outside and in the inside, but civil engineers will will take the 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 drawings from the architect and turn it into calculations and specifications and and numbers. So there will be there are the number crunchers. They they take the 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 drawings and and turn that into beams and columns and the specific dimensions. And so uh, they they do the actual work that that, that comes after the. Uh, the architectural design itself. Uh, so they're, they're obviously they, they complement each other. There's no question about that. But that is really the difference uh, between the two. So what I loved about um, building construction was not only did you have the architects and the civil engineers, but you have mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and landscape architects. And you have a whole team of professionals working together to create a building. And I, I just love that that kind of multidisciplinary work. So Dr. Ishak, I have another question for you. What type of civil engineer disciplines would, would design and build a dam? Would it be a water resource engineer, a structural engineer? Oh, building, building a dam, I think it, you would definitely have to have geotechnical engineering, uh, a lot of geotechnical engineering knowledge, of course, uh, because essentially this is, uh, 
this is a structure that is made of uh, soil mostly. Uh, but again, again, you have to be a civil engineer in, in general, of course, um, to be able to um, to be involved in any type of uh, civil engineering project itself. But geotechnical engineering is a major component of of the design of of dams, for sure. Thank you, Stephen. Can you talk about how you balanced the engineering curriculum with some of your extracurricular activities that you talked about? Of course. So um, one of the biggest things, um, and this is for really anyone who's in college, is going to be time management. Um, one of the things that really helped me was finding how to best organize my weekly schedule. So some people prefer using an agenda, um, writing notes down. I personally like putting everything in my calendar on my phone. Um, and a lot of those skills I actually got was from that um, introduction to engineering class my first semester. Um, so in that class, they actually spend one of the whole classes on um, kind of formatting your week. So if you have class um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at this time, um, you'll schedule um, some study time after it maybe for an hour or two. Um, then on this day, you'll um, have some free time to maybe go to the gym, um, take a nap. Um, so it was really important to kind of schedule your week out and look ahead. Um, and I think that really helped me be able to balance um, doing um, clubs and different activities on campus because um, I may have an assignment due in a week, but if I worked on it throughout the entire week instead of the day before, I'd have more free time later on in the week to participate in other activities on campus and be involved. Um, so the biggest thing for me was time management. Um, and luckily I was able to get help with that during that engineering class my freshman year. Um, so I didn't kind of have to struggle where some students might, um, where they don't have good time management skills their first semester and then their grades may fall behind or they're not as involved. Um, so um, definitely the biggest thing I can say is time management. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so, Dr. Ishak, uh, there's a question about ODU, and does ODU accept exchanges of undergraduate students for a semester from Puerto Rico? Um, and they actually wanted to say that they thanked you so much for this presentation. Oh, yes, I, I, of course we do. I mean, if you're interested in coming uh, for one semester to take uh, some of our classes, of course, um, there is a um, a process that you can do that to make sure that when you when you complete those classes, um, then when you go back to your your program, you will get credit for those classes. Obviously, uh, that's the objective. So uh, the first thing is that you have to decide what courses you would like to come to ODU to take here, and then of course you have to consult with um, your um, uh, your department there and, and your your program there to. Uh, make sure that those courses, once you complete them, um, you will be able. They will be able to transfer back into uh, your your degree, so then you can get credit for them over there. But definitely yes. Thank you. Here's another question: um, Is drafting important for civil engineering, and how might drafting be used as part of the profession? Okay, uh, so uh, that's a good question to be honest with you, and and uh, and, and people split um, um, in, in terms of uh, in, in answering this question. I know that uh, drafting is important in the sense that um, uh, you really have to be able to read the drawings, and you have to be able to read blueprints. So you have to learn how to do that. Um, and and uh, and in our program, you know, uh, you know, students are. Uh, Obviously, encouraged to um, uh, to learn how to do that. Uh, the reality, uh, is, however, is that when you graduate as a civil engineer, it's very unlikely that you will be doing drafting yourself. Um, you know, it's uh, it's an important, it's an, it's a good skill to have, but it's unlikely that you will be asked to to do the drawings yourself. Um, and because there will be draftsmen who will be, you know, this is their job to do. But but the least you have to have is understand and read the drawings. Because if you can't read the drawings, then then there's definitely a problem. There's a disconnect here. Now, drawings are the communication that be, between the 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 project that that you're working on and you. I mean, that's that's really the link between the two. When you look at a drawing, you see exactly what's going to happen, what this project is going to turn out at the end. So that is the way to communicate with other engineers as well. Everything has to go through the drawings. So this is, is very important to uh, to learn. Great. Thank you so much. So this is an, an, an interesting question, but I think it can go to talking about ethics in civil engineering. So the question is, 
could civil engineering use be used for bad purposes? Uh, okay, rephrase that question. Um, so I, I guess, um, you know, could someone- Could it be used? Is, is that, that's the question? Yeah, could it be used for bad purposes? So I think a way to address that is about kind of the ethics of civil engineering, and that's not really, you would lose your license and you couldn't practice, right? Of course, uh, there are so many examples out there of, I mean, and this applies to any profession. You know, I can, I can think of not just engineers, but doctors, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, scientists, any profession can be definitely used, um, you know, for bad purposes. Okay, there's no question about that. And that's why the code of ethics exists in all professions, not just in engineering, right? Uh, because you, you really have to, as, as engineers, we just really interact directly with the society and, and the community, because if you're building a structure, you have to make sure that the structure is safe for those who will occupy the structure. If you're building roadways or bridges, you have to make sure that they are you know, built according to code so that they will sustain and they will be safe to use. Um, but but yes, of course. Uh, sometimes you know malpractice can can exist, uh, and and it, and it does exist. But with with the with the codes of ethics, okay, um, you know it, that that is definitely going to be limited as much as possible because we we have to comply with those, and it's very important for us be, before you actually become a licensed engineer, become become a PE. You have to pass, um, you know, the um, the ethics uh, exam, and you have to understand all, you know, the ethic. You have to take an ethics course, and you have to pass the questions on the ethics, and, and and you have to do that every few years as well to be reminded of what you can do and what you cannot do, and what's right and what's wrong, uh, because people sometimes may not be able to see the line between the two, and sometimes that line can be a little bit you know, um, vague. Uh, but again, yes, when you're working with, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, with with community or you're doing a project that's going to help the community, we have to think about um, the, the consequences of something bad. I mean, we all know what happened uh, in Miami a couple of years ago when one of the pedestrian bridges collapsed. Okay, I mean, that's, this is a, an, an example and that should never have happened. Uh, and and there, of course, there are many other examples of failures in in civil engineering um, uh, uh, projects that uh, that could have been avoided. Thank you so much, Dr. Ishak. So Stephen, would you like to say a few words in closing? We're about to wrap up. Um, sure. So I guess the um, one thing I definitely want to say is um, make sure you really reach out to those opportunities that the college, um, the school in general offers. Um, there's so many great programs or um, alumni that the college can connect you with for internship opportunities, um, even just kind of exploring deeper of what discipline you want to go into exactly. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to um, set up meetings with your advisors, uh, members of the dean's office. Um, they're more than willing to help you. Um, it have been really helpful to me. And a lot of students sometimes don't take advantage of that. Um, so my biggest advice would just be make sure um, wherever you go, you definitely take advantage of the resources that the school offers um, because they are there for your success. Um, you just have to ask for it. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Dr. Ishak, would you like to say a few closing words? Uh, yes, of course. Um, I just have to say that, um, and I'm going to piggyback on what Steve mentioned earlier, which is time management. Uh, if you choose engineering uh, as a career, uh, um, you know, you have to keep in mind there are certain things that and behaviors that you have to uh, to start working on uh, if you don't have that already, some of the skills. And one of the, the most important ones uh, is what Steve pointed out, which is time management. And you, you're not, you're not going to need that just uh, as a student. Uh, you're going to need that throughout your career as an engineer. You have to be self-disciplined. Um, you have to be very efficient. You have to be very productive, uh, and and it all starts with time management, uh, quite frankly. So, and and again, you have to be able to work with others. Um, as an engineer, this is this is extremely important. You have to be able to collaborate with others. You have to be able to communicate with others. Um, you have to maintain the right attitude. Uh, understand the meaning of teamwork. Uh, it, it, it is extremely important. You cannot just work in engineering as 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 a field um, alone. 
Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, you may be able to do that as a doctor, okay? <laughs> Maybe, but but not a, not an as an as an engineer. Uh, there is no question about that. Uh, no one can 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 build an entire project by by themselves. Um, so so, but these are the important things that you and I have to understand that what you're doing is for the good of the public. Uh, this is not about you, but this is about the people that you're serving and the society and the community that, that you live in. So you always have to think about the consequences of doing something that may eventually hurt or impact other people or other individuals uh, in, in, in your society. So Dr. Ishak, I want to thank you, Steve, and I want to thank you also. This was a great presentation. We had lots of great questions from the audience. I hope you guys all have a great week and um, thank you all so very much. Yeah, I just want to mention that I did send a couple of links uh, in the chat uh, for those who may not have seen it. Uh, those are short YouTube video clips uh, for anybody who might be interested in. So what we'll do is we'll actually post those video links um, on the website um, along with Dr. Ishak's slides so that you can go to those resources. Sure. Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye-bye.